um, Mr. Andrew Josie, who is the VP Certification and Standards at the Open Group. Um, since joining the uh, Open Group in 1996, Andrew has been closely involved with the standards development, certification and testing activities of the Open Group, and he's led many of the standards projects, including the specification and certification development for the Archimate, TOGAF, POSIX and UNIX programs. Andrew is a member of IEEE, Usenix, Floss UK, and the Association of Enterprise Architects, which is uh, an organization we'll hear about right after Andrew. So uh, a warm uh, virtual welcome from the Open Group to Andrew Josie. Over to you, sir. Hi, Steve. Thanks. Hopefully you can uh, hear me OK. Yes, we can. OK, so I've just got to uh, get things going. Right. Okay, so anyways, that's that's me. As Steve has mentioned, I'm our um, VP of Standards and Certification at the Open Group, and I've been responsible for a lot of the uh, programs in, around certification and training, especially around TOGAF and the Archimate standard. Uh, anyway, this is the agenda. So um, as I say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. It's actually looking out the window here. It's actually very stormy, there's a bit of lightning, so hopefully that won't affect some um, the internet. Um, this is the agenda for the session I, I want to take you through today. So um, I'm going to be looking at three topics. Uh, first of all, I'll be looking at the availability of resources for TOGAF and Archimate virtual training. So the theme you'll hear from me today is all about doing things virtually or doing things remotely. Uh, we'll look at, uh, secondly, we'll look at the TOGAF and Archimate certifications, including some new open badges that we've recently introduced. And then finally, thirdly, I'm going to actually look at how you can take an exam remotely. So I'm actually going to take you through that process. Not everybody's seen that, so I'm hoping that will, um, will be helpful to some of you. Anyway, before we uh, do any more, let's uh, start by looking at training. First thing on the agenda. Um, the Open Group has uh, 69 training organizations worldwide that deliver TOGAF and Archimate training. There's a total of 92 accredited courses. That actually breaks down into 69 TOGAF courses and 23 Archimate courses at the moment. Um, each of those courses is assessed by the Open Group, and, and that occurs before we award them accreditation. And accreditation means they meet certain quality standards, certain ways of working that we require. Um, all the courses that are accredited are against the latest versions of the respective standards. So they're against the 9.2 version of the TOGAF standard and the 3.1 version of the Archimate specification. In fact, the Archimate specification recently updated from 3.01. I think that was last November to 3.1. So that's a recent change there. Our accredited training is available in 15 languages. Sometimes I read out all the languages, but I won't do that today. And they can be delivered in a, in a, a number of different settings, uh, in classrooms, obviously with appropriate social distancing at the moment, virtually, e-learning, or sometimes we have blended. So there may be a course that does a mixture of one or more of the methods, delivery methods. All of the Open Group accredited training course providers are able to deliver their courses both in person or as virtual instructor led. That was a, one thing we made very clear you know, early on this year was uh, that, that this was a possibility. Um, in addition, some of our training course providers offer e-learning courses. And we've tried to make that easy by providing a virtual training sort of resources page here at the Open Group. So um, if you click on the QR code, it will take you straight to this or anywhere from the open group website where you see you know, from the home page you see the various pull downs uh, all the certification uh, links are on the certifications pull down from the open group home page so virtually everything I will show you today you can find by navigating to that point I tried to include QR codes so that um, if you're following along either live or in the recording and you're so inclined you can actually point your camera at them and um, most, um, most mobile platforms today will actually interpret that for you and go off and find uh, the page. Uh, we maintain calendars on our site to make it possible for you to find suitable courses. And we, as well as having you know, um, typical on-site courses, we now have um, recently added a virtual classroom course calendar. So you can find um, you know, where virtual courses are being run. Uh, often they will tell you what time zone they're in. I think I'm not sure the examples do there. We also provide 
we also provide links to our e-learning course providers. So for those of you who prefer to study online, you know, at your own pace, you, you can go out and find an accredited e-learning course. So moving into the second part of today's talk, um, I want to look at um, certifications and badges for both the um, TOGAF and the Archimate programs. First of all, a little bit of um, background, you know, what, why is certification important? And um, what we've seen is that many of the open group standards have become or are becoming industry standards. So for example, we see the single unit specification there's the standard for open operating systems. We see the FACE standard for avionics, the OPAS standard emerging for open process automation. And what we've seen in the enterprise architecture space is that the TOGAF standard is the de facto standard for EA, with the Archimate specification a key part of what we now call the architect's toolkit. So what we're finding is that employers, HR managers, need recognized certifications to reference for job profiles. And what we're seeing with the TOGAF standard is that um, that's widely recognized as the enterprise architecture certification to have and uh, frequently appears amongst the, um, the highest paying IT skills lists in the, in the, in the USA's um, top certifications list. Um, for example, this uh, Foot Partners LLC is one that we often quote. So what are these... Um, enterprise architecture certifications from the open group. Well, they are trusted, vendor neutral, globally recognized and portable credentials. So they're not tied to one specific vendor or technology, you know, like you might find with some sort of, you know, particular devices or technologies. Um, they provide value by demonstrating to employers your commitment to enterprise architecture as a discipline. And they're backed by a market-driven education and certification program that supports both the TOGAF and the Archimate standards. As I mentioned, we have over 90 courses now available. So um, today we have a portfolio of TOGAF certification products. Um, looking through this slide from the left, we have um, two certifications. And then we have to the right what we call so the first First column is uh, certifications, and to the right, the other three columns are what we call certification credentials. Um, in the certification column, we have um, a foundation and what we call TOGAF 9 certified. So these are at two levels, two purposes. The first is about understanding the basic concepts and core principles, you know, clearly the foundational knowledge that you need. And then the second is a higher level is about a applying and being able to analyze situations. So that's the ability to analyze and apply the, the TOGAF standard. These are supported, as I mentioned, now by a number of certification credentials. Uh, the first two of these are what we call specializations. There's TOGAF business architecture. So if you want to specialize in, in, in the TOGAF business architecture, you can uh, take this particular course, it's, um, and which leads to a certification credential. That is a certificate and an open badge. Uh, we also have recently introduced integrating risk and security. In fact, we're going to be bringing out some self-study materials for that shortly. We're um, doing a bit of a relaunch um, um, on that. So that's something to look at. And that's about um, uh, integrating, it's literally as the title says, integrating risk and security, the concepts of information security management and enterprise risk management, how you can integrate, integrate the, that in, in with the TOGAF ADM. Uh, you can also look a little bit at SAVSA, which is a, a complementary framework that can be used with the TOGAF standard. Lastly, we have um, on the right there what, uh, something called TOGAF Essentials 2018. And this is what we call an up-to-date knowledge certification credential. I'll talk a little bit about that, a little bit more about that as I talk about um, this other certification badge that we have, which is the uh, version 9.2 badge. Um, the TOGAF certification program was actually launched in 2009 and applies to all the 9.x releases. So, you know, if you're TOGAF 9 certified, that may well have be, be back to, you know, one of the earlier releases. So the way that we can show that you're up to date knowledge is by um, awarding what we, this new badge, this 9.2 badge. And there are a couple of ways to get there. Um, either by, if you were previously qualified against 9 or 9.1, you can take the TOGAF Essentials 2018 
certification credential to get you up to date. That's all the changes that were introduced in the edition of the standard that was produced in 2018. So that's the, the nine point. Attend an accredited training course against 9.2, you can go straight to this uh, 9.2 badge. So as I say, there are two ways you can uh, earn this. Uh, look at the Archimate certification portfolio. Obviously, this is a bit simpler. We haven't really gone out and added um, specialization certification credentials yet. There is one. I'll talk a little bit about that. We have two main levels for the certification. Again, these are very similar to what we have in the TOGAF certification program, although instead of calling the higher level certified, we actually call it practitioner here, and we try to, to emphasize the uh, practical nature. We um, we supply practical exercises and things that we encourage all those training to take to actually, so that they have the ability to apply and um, actually do some modeling, which is different. We have an up-to-date certification credential. This is primarily for our trainers to ensure that they are, they are knowledgeable of the um, differences between 301 and 3.1, which weren't that many, and probably to the end user is probably not that significant. So um, we just mandate this for trainers to make sure that they are aware and have the knowledge and understanding of the differences. Obviously, since I've got you here, on the talk today, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the other related certifications. So just briefly, there are other knowledge-based certifications that you can you can study either by attending a accredited training or self-study and take exams. Obviously, it's the IT, IT for IT reference architecture for managing the business of IT. We have the digital practitioner body of knowledge. So that's all, um, that's quite new. Um, there's a, a study guide and certification launched in the last year. And we have the open fair and um, body of knowledge and uh, that's about risk and um, a taxonomy for risk and how you measure information risk. I wanted to talk, um, I mentioned at the very start that I would be talking about some new things that we've recently added. And this is one of, this is one of the new things uh, this is what we call TOGAF role-based badges. Um, we've defined what we consider as two sort of basic roles uh, for these badges. Um, we're seeing a shift in the industry towards um, employers looking for, for people who've, who can work in specific roles rather than have knowledge just of standards. So we've, um, we've looked at that and come out with these badges, which we're able to award in that area. Um, what do we, so we have two of them. There's team member and practitioner. What do we mean by practitioner in this case? Well, we mean somebody that's able to develop, maintain, and use an enterprise architecture. Whereas team member is pretty self-explanatory. That's about people who are able to work in teams developing enterprise architecture. We've introduced um, these badges. Um, as you can tell by the name, they're based on the TOGAF standard. And we have also options for visual modeling and digital approaches. And I'll explain a little bit more about that as I show you the badges. So there are four initial badges. Here you can scan the QR code. There's an enterprise architecture team member and an enterprise architecture practitioner. We then also have a digital enterprise architecture team member and an enterprise architecture modeling practitioner. And I'll explain what that all means and how you get to those on the next slide. Just hopefully this, this graphic will explain. So the idea here is that, that when you, um, achieve two certifications, then you become eligible for the badge. So you will see, you can see from this grid, for example, a, an enterprise architecture modeling practitioner is required to be TOGAF certified, to have the 9.2 up-to-date knowledge, and also to be an Archimate 3 practitioner, and then they can get the enterprise architecture, architecture modeling practitioner badge. Now, I'm not gonna run through all of these, um, just give you some key facts. Uh, we issue the badges several times a week. Um, they're issued shortly after you achieve the second certification that is required for the role. They're free and they're automatically issued. So if you're in our badging program, if you've opted in, you've got some badges already, you know, further badges will be issued automatically by the system. How will you know will you, when you've got one? Well, if you have opted in, then what happens is you get a notification from our badging partner. That's a company called Credly. We use their acclaim platform and they will notify you. You can set up your Credly acclaim 
profile if you want to actually automatically accept badges so you don't have to do anything. And just to show you here, this is actually, again, a picture of the badge, but also the certificate that is available with the badge. You can get this certificate in your Credlia claim account. So we're sort of leveraging the technology of open badges to be able to um, issue certificates for some of these things that way as well. And lastly, on this topic, if you want to find a, uh, out a little bit more, we have a two minute video short. So um, that summarizes the program. So you can click on the QR code or click on the, the link. This is up YouTube. It's on the Open Groups YouTube channel. You will find we're putting more little two minute video shorts out um, on the YouTube channel just so you can uh, pick up on the, the latest news and programs in, in two minutes. We're always very aware that people have uh, prefer to keep it, keep it short. So now I'd like to really take you through something which is a bit more practical. Um, you may not have seen, seen this, but it's actually to take you through um, how you can take an exam remotely. I'm hoping this will be useful because um, what we've seen obviously this year is, is a shift, you know, from uh, the majority of our exams being taken at test centers to, uh, I think it's a, a it's a, a 1100% increase um, year to date of people going to um, take their exams remotely versus test centers, obviously due to the pandemic. Um, so I'm going to talk you through exactly what that entails in the next few slides. So, so, um, so this is the thing now you can take your exams remotely at home or in your office if you so please. Um, obviously, this is a yeah. A, a timely alternative, I guess, um, with the situation that arrived. Um, luckily, the open group had um, had prepared its um, exam so that we could do this all along, and it was quite easy just to switch on a few more exams when when the need arose. Um, these are the exams that are now available. It's virtually all of our exams. Um, you'll see um, there are a couple of exceptions. The Chinese exams are not available, and that's um, primarily because we're unable to deliver the remote exam uh, service in China. So I'm going to take you through um, the solution that we use. This is a solution provided by the Open Groups Examination Provider, Test Provider, uh, Pearson View, and they use a technology called OnView Online Proctoring. So I'm going to walk you through the setup and check-in process. Um, this is what you would do when it's time to take your exam. Okay, so um, before this stage, you would have run some system tests to check that your system and your network is suitable and can support the remote testing. And you would have logged into your account previously at the open group. We have single sign-on to Pearson View that connects you to a Pearson View account, and you would have previously schedule, scheduled your exam. So what I'm going to show you now is the stages that you go through to actually take your exam. Okay, so this is an overview of what you would you would have to go through to take the exam. Um, basically, there's some setup and then there's a check-in process. And then these are automated. You know, basically, the automated process will guide you through the entire setup and check-in process to the point of starting the exam. Um, there is some testing that occurs of the computer. There's also an interaction with, with a mobile device. So it actually uses your phone, or if you don't have a phone, you can use the webcam on your camera. And once this automated process is complete, you'll be then handed off to a live doctor who will monitor your exam session for you. As I mentioned, um, we're presuming at this point that you previously scheduled an exam and it's now, and it's now time to come in and take the exam. As they say, you should start this process. The advice is to start this process 30 minutes in advance of the actual scheduled time. So um, at this point, we've we've logged into the open group main page. We pulled the certification pull down and we've gone to the take exam point and that's led us to link to log into our Pearson View account. And there we will see the exams that are ready to take and we will click on the available exams and we'll be at this screen. Um, so we, we would select begin exam. At this point, we, you'll be supplied with an access code and a link to download the OnView application. Now, this is an application that will have to run on your computer. Um, it contains two components. There's the proctoring software and the secure browser. 
And the Proctor in software is responsible for collecting some information and we'll go walk through that. And obviously it has to collect some information about your ID and so on, and we'll talk that out. Uh, it also checks your internet speed and that you've got video streaming working. Uh, once that's been connected and all, all everything is suitable, then the secure browser is launched. And that actually locks down your computer. And um, now this is currently a 100 megabyte application. So you know, it takes a bit of time to come down. And um, particularly on certain platforms, you may have to um, give the application permissions to run. Um, uh, currently, um, this technology is supported on both Windows 10 and also Mac OS. So I know on Mac OS, you have to grant the application several permissions in the system and, and this screen actually gives you the advice that you should do that. And you can of course test all of this in advance and we do encourage a system test. This is the initial screen for the OnView application. So you, you have an access code, which is what you should have been given before. That will be automatically populated here. You can enter a phone number so that the proctor can contact you if necessary. So at this point, we are ready to do the second stage, which is to begin the check-in. And that requires you to start using your mobile device. As I mentioned, if you don't have a mobile phone, then you can actually um, use your webcam. So why do we have to use a mobile device? Well, we have to use that to take some photos and upload, those to upload them to Pearson View. This includes a picture of yourself, uh, some photo ID to prove who you are, and also some verification of your, your workspace of where you're going to take the exam, so the environment around you. As I mentioned, if you don't have a mobile phone, then you can use your webcam to take the required photos. Uh, firstly, you need to take a, a mugshot, a headshot, and this is very much like um, preparing a passport photo. So you've got to get your head in the right position and you've got to make sure that you're, um, you know, you're, you're have an expressionless sort of uh, look on, not smiling too much. You then are required to present a current government issued ID and the name on your ID must match the name in your web account profile. Now, if it doesn't, you know, you should uh, make sure you contact the open group um, at least a couple of days before. If there's something not quite right, we can normally help you out. There are a few little sort of funnies between um, the character sets that Pearson View supports and what the open group supports. Uh, we support full UTF-8 characters, but Pearson supports some, um, I think it's some limited sets. So sometimes we have to transcode um, accented characters into their sort of ASCII equivalents, but that's quite normal. Um, acceptable forms of ID include driver's license, passport, military, military ID, identification cards, if you're in the US, green cards, permanent resident cards, uh, and government issued local language IDs. So if in doubt, it's always best to contact Pearson View, um, who manages the service for us if you've got any um, concerns about your ID. Then there's an environment check. Now this includes taking four photos of the room where the exam will be taken. So um, everything has to be clear within arm's reach. No monitors other than the one used for testing can be plugged in. There can be no notes, papers, whiteboards, and so on. You must be in a room with the door closed or in a private space. So you'll see it asks you to take a picture, basically looking front and then back, uh, back, left, and right. So, and then you upload those. Once you've uploaded the photos, the mobile check-in is complete, and then you're on to the final steps. Uh, so as part of the final steps, it just gives you some reminders and, and actually wants you to um, explicitly confirm you agree to these rules, because if you break these rules, then what happens is your exam session can be revoked. And then lastly, you should just make sure that you've closed all the other applications that are on your um, PC, apart from the OnView application. And then you're into the final stage of waiting for your proctor. Uh, this can take up to 15 minutes of the, to, 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 uh, to happen. And um, if there is a delay, you know, that it can be due to a problem with your photos. And in that case, the proctor will, uh, will attempt to reach you over chat or call you on your, on your phone. So if you see an unknown caller calling in, that could well be the proctor, so please answer it. Now, if you don't get connected within 15 minutes, what Pearson View have actually done now is actually to put up a pop-up that will actually give you the option 
to actually get some immediate help on chat and also a, a, a web screen to pop up and possibly allow you to reschedule at that time. So um, they're always looking to improve the experience. Obviously, we're talking about connecting remote computers to remote systems all around the world over varying sort of internet connections. So sometimes things can go wrong and people cannot get connected. So assuming we were connected, then once the proctor has arrived, we'll be ready to start the examination. So that's um, at this point, I would wish you good luck and off you would go. So just to wrap up, um, I've given you a bit of a wheel stop tool there. I, th tour. I think I've used all of my all of my 25 minutes. Um, I'm hoping that you get three takeaways from here that you should understand the training approach, you know, to see and be able to locate um, our virtual and uh, remote training resources. You should understand the available certifications from the open group, including the new badges that we've uh, recently introduced. And lastly, you should understand um, how you take your exam remotely. So I hope that's been helpful. I will be around to take questions. I'm not sure if we have time right now, but uh, I am here. And also, here's some contact information if anyone needs to contact me, either on LinkedIn or Twitter. Hi, Steve. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Great, great summary. Um, and we are out of time, but I do. I'm going to. I'm going to try and um, get a couple of couple of questions in here. Um, you've talked obviously about our, our uh, knowledge based systems, but a question came in about uh, which relates more, I believe, to um, our skills and experience based um, uh, program, uh, the Open Professions program, and and the question is. Um, some of the personal certifications require contributions like teaching, but my contributions are mostly inside my organization. So what, op what options do I have to contribute outside or to the open group community? And how do I start? Okay. Um, obviously, we do. I, and I do understand in the experience-based certification, we do recognize internal contributions within companies as well, mentoring and so on. But mm. within the open group, we recently, or not, not that recently, I think it's probably been, I lose track of time, might be a year now, but um, we do have contribution awards. So if you are working it, on a publication, it is possible to get an award. So we have um, author awards, co-author awards, uh, contributor awards, reviewer awards, translator awards. And so the idea is these would all be recognized um, that you could put forward as your experience. Indeed, we hope to build um, eventually a um, CPE, Continuing Professional Education, uh, you know, with CPD, CPE and C order CPD credits that you could, um, you could, that would be recognized and part of what we got with our awards that are out there, which is another type of open badge that I didn't cover today. Um, they would actually get recognition in such a program. So um, yeah, that is one way to actually give back to the open group to contribute amongst the community here. Great, great. So there are some questions, Andrew, that I know you can answer in a heartbeat um, in the uh, Q&A channel. If you could get an opportunity to uh, take a look at those and answer those, that would uh, that would be great for the folks who've uh, taken the time to ask them. But uh, yeah, so I know you know welcome. all the answers, yeah. but we need to move on. I know. And there is a study guide for the business architect yourself certification, Great. just to mention that quickly. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, uh, a big uh, virtual round of applause uh, for Andrew Josie. Thank you, Andrew.